Coming up on Ag Week TV, we're at one of the first farm shows of the season, the Northern Ag Expo in Fargo, with an update on the farm bill markets and 2019 planting intentions. Insolvency action is taken against two Devil's Lake grain-related market agencies. A South Dakota farm kid and entrepreneur has made history by rebuilding the world's largest steam engine. Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Michelle Rook. This week our show comes to you from one of the first farm shows of the season, the Northern Ag Expo in Fargo. The annual show is run by the North Dakota Agricultural Association. The free show includes seminar speakers and demonstrations, and of course a trade show with the newest in technology for 2019. Technology obviously is really important, and, and these guys will you know, look at that, but I think right now their main focus is what are we gonna do with our crop? From what I've been hearing, that's, that's their big concern. He says it was a tough year with tariffs and weather, and the expo was designed to help farmers deal with those challenges as they plan for 2019. One of the keynote speakers here this week at the Northern Ag Expo is Jim Wiesmeyer with Pro Farmer. We have a lot of headlines here midweek at the show, and let's talk about the Farm Bill because everybody wants to know, are we going to get a deal? What does it look like, and what are some of the positive and negatives? Sure. At midweek, it looked positive. I think we're on the two-yard line. Uh, if, you, if there can be an agreement on forest management issues at the White House level, with congressional leaderships, then the other issues on the farm bill will unfold and come into place and we would have a farm bill announcement and then the vote, uh, you know, within probably next week. So watch for forestry management language. Commodity title, will it look better than what we started with? I think so. There's some positive news coming out if, if the final bill is what at least my sources are saying. We could uh, have a, a provision that would allow farmers to annually elect whether or not they want to go into to the ARC or the PLC program on an annual basis, not locked into the you know through the life of the next farm bill, there will be a, a uh, an increase, a small increase in loan rates, uh, and there also will be yield uh, updates for all producers, not just those affected uh, in the in the in the drought uh, areas uh, in recent years. And I think those are all uh, all, uh, all good news from a safety net perspective. A lot of uncertainty, that's for sure. Thanks so much for being with us, uh, Jim Wiesmeyer with. Pro Farmer here at the Northern Ag Expo. With the recent dicamba labeling and application changes announced by the EPA, speakers at the Expo talked about what that will mean for the 2019 growing season. The biggest changes include a shorter dicamba application window to decrease inversions and off-target drift. Dicamba can only be applied an hour after sunrise to two hours before sunset. EPA also mandated a new application cutoff date. Once you get 45 days out from planting, you're done applying the pesticide. That's new. Also, uh, there is a growth stage requirement. So once the plants enter into R1, so when we see the first bloom on a soybean plant, um, if that occurs before the 45-day window, then you're also done. Applicators must also keep the spray solution above a pH of 5.0. Jason Davis with the University of Arkansas told farmers this is the third year of unprecedented federal label changes for dicamba, and this may not be the last. The North Dakota Public Service Commission is taking insolvency actions against two grain-related marketing companies in the Devil's Lake area, with grain suppliers saying they owe them more than $5 million. The grain companies are operated by Hunter Hansen, and problems started coming to light after reports of bounced checks. Michael Pates joins us now with more. Hunter Hansen can be described as a young man in a hurry. He's only 21, but he has a number of businesses in the Ramsey County area. Two of them, Midwest Grain Trading Company and Nodak Grain, have troubled business transactions of up to $6 million. And now the PSC has issued a cease and desist order. Hunter Hansen has worked at elevators since he was a teenager, but wanted to run his own grain business. He started as a roving grain dealer in 2017. Then he bought two elevators in the Devil's Lake and Rugby areas. I bet we had $15 million worth of business this year. Or more. I don't know, that's probably, that's probably closer to like $23 million worth of business this year. 
Hansen says business was good until a frozen hose on a sump pump caused some of the bins in an elevator near Devil's Lake to be flooded, and that led to 32 truckloads of grain to be rejected. A separate issue led to some bounced checks. And you never really had a problem with uh, the marketing part of it, then it's just this one mechanical problem yeah. with the pump. And then the, see what, that, we would have got over that I've, eventually. I mean, we could have, we would have slowly pushed through that with that, but then the truck thing I misunderstanding with the checks that just prolonged everybody got everybody worried and it just spiraled down from there. Hansen says a PSE was just doing its job protecting farmers and elevators when it issued the cease and desist order but says smaller companies are more vulnerable. We don't have the capital like the other bigger elevators do like CHS and all we just were just pretty much rely on cash flow and if something if you have one hiccup like we had it's very tough to overcome it. Hansen hopes insurance might cover some of the resulting flood losses. That's the goal at the end of the day and that's what we'll strive for every day and that's what I've been working on the last two weeks is making every option to get this figured out. In Ramsey County this is Mikkel Pates for Ag Week. The PSC and legislators are considering improving protections for farmers doing business with roving grain dealers in part because of the situation. Michelle? Thanks Mikkel. And Mikkel will have more on this complex story in the next Ag Week magazine. Coming up next on Ag Week TV, we'll show you the world's largest steam engine restoration. At Superior Grain Equipment, we're committed to quality and service, offering you the best in grain storage and dryers for any size operation. Our experts will work with you to determine the most efficient and economical storage solution for your needs. We help protect your bottom line and your future with the industry's best bins and warranties. Make the superior choice for protection today and tomorrow with Superior Grain Equipment. Nothing holds more promise than a seed. And when it comes from Peterson Farm Seed, it's backed with a promise from us. We will sell no seed we wouldn't be happy to plant on our own farm so that growers like Pete can keep a promise of his own to build a profitable business with his kids and give them the opportunity to one day do the same with theirs. <laughs> Grow your promise. Grow Peterson Farm Seed. Upgrade your trailer to electric with the Rolltech electric system from AgriCover. Strong, flexible pivot arms and motor mount rotate and telescope, allowing the roll tube to rise and flex over heaped loads. The positive automatic lock is impossible to back off to control the flow of grain. This integrated system uses one wireless remote to operate up to 10 tarps and hoppers, keeping your driver out of the dust, rain, and harm's way. See the Rolltech system in action at an AgriCover dealer near you. When harvest comes around, time is precious and you don't have a moment to waste. North Star Ag offers the Loftness Grain Logics Grain Bag Loader to deliver versatile grain storage performance load after load. Loftness's user friendly grain baggers are easy to load and unload, perfect to get your harvest in the bag. North Star Ag also sells a variety of Valmar spreaders, the leader in air boom delivery, and is a full service Meridian Hopper Bin dealer. Visit NorthStarAg.com to see our complete new and used equipment inventory or give us a call. For corn and soybean farmers, it's been a challenging year. So join us as we look towards the future and make sense of international trade at the second annual Northern Corn and Soybean Expo, featuring speakers Mark Mayfield and Chip Flory, with breakout sessions, free breakfast, lunch, and a large corn and soybean trade show. You don't want to miss the second annual Corn and Soybean Expo, Tuesday, February 12th at the Fargo Dome. Welcome back. A South Dakota farm kid made history this year by recreating and restoring the world's largest steam engine. For the Andover native, it was a labor of love that took years to complete. Today we share the story of his journey. In the steam engine hobby, it's, it has a huge legacy. It's like the Titanic of the tractors. I mean, it was the biggest one ever produced and, and none of them survived. That's the way Corey Anderson describes the world's only Case 150 steam engine that he recreated from just the original boiler. The road locomotive was basically lost in, in history. I mean, all of the nine that were built were eventually scrapped. So it was kind of lost in history until, until we recreated it and brought it back to life. 
current tractor today would be about a third of the torque and power of the 150. It's a project he dreamed about since he was only 10 years old and began to design in 2007. When I acquired the original blueprints from Case, then I had to design everything into a 3D CAD model. And the three-dimensional CAD model basically allows us to, to produce the parts. You can see the whole gear train here. For the next 10 years, Anderson and a team of volunteers worked at Dakota Foundry and Webster to cast the parts for the Case 150, followed by assembly in Wyoming. At the same time, he was building a business to fund the nearly million and a half dollar project. My dream was, was always to build this ever since I was a little boy and, and so I, I knew that I had to have facilities and, and resources and, and the equipment and, and team to support doing something like that. So I started Anderson Industries in my garage. 8,000 plus hours later, his dream was unveiled at the James Valley Threshing Show in Andover in September. A day he says was surreal. I drove the engine around, we went down the parade route and had a ceremony where we, where we got a picture of everybody who helped. And then we went out to the plowing field and successfully pulled the, the 24 bottom John Deere plow, which was actually two plows hooked together. This is a mountaintop oh my guys. <laughs> he says the response to the restoration of the world's largest steam engine was overwhelming. People came from all over the world to, to come and see the, the 150 case born again. And while Anderson isn't sure if it qualifies for the Guinness Book of World Records, just seeing his dream come to reality is more than enough for him. It's a little bit hard to, to comprehend. I mean, it's something that was a dream for, for so long. And, you know, at some points you feel like you're never going to see the end. And then realizing that we made it and we achieved the goal and everything turned out great, and it's a great feeling. You can see the Case 150 Labor Day weekend at the Steam Threshers reunion in Rolog, Minnesota. It will also be displayed every year at the James Valley Threshing Show in Andover, South Dakota on the weekend after Labor Day. When Ag Week TV continues, we'll hear from folks at the Northern Ag Expo about planting intentions for 2019. But first, we'll have grain marketing strategies for the 2018 crop and your agri-weather outlook. Martinson Ag Risk Management offers a variety of crop marketing and crop insurance packages to our customers. With over 40 years of experience, our dedicated staff works hard to ensure you get the best advice on crop insurance, marketing, and risk management. Contact Randy or any of the staff at Martinson Ag Risk Management today at 701-205-4200 or visit us online at martinsonag.com. Aspire is a premium delivery of boron. It's a potash source that has two forms of boron in it. One form of boron is available early in the crop needs. And then we have another form of boron that's more of a slow release. So throughout the whole growth stage or a cycle of a crop, you need to teaspoon feed that crop, especially with these micronutrients. If you need to learn more about boron, what does boron do within the plant? So we have AspireBoron.com. There's also CropNutrition.com. Advanced Grain Handling is your regional dealer for grain handler dryers, bins, and accessories. With Grain Handler's continuous mixed flow drying systems, you're capable of high levels of grain dryer efficiency on all types of grain, including seed grain. Advanced Grain Handling also carries West Steel's quality stainless steel products for on-farm and commercial grain storage solutions. Advanced Grain Handling has licensed and trained service techs and a licensed electrical shop. Get a hold of Chad Kylo to find the perfect solution for your farm. Make sure your farm equipment is season ready with an uptime inspection from your Titan Machinery service professionals. Titan Machinery's team of Case IH factory trained service technicians has the knowledge and experience to find, correct, and prevent mechanical issues that could shut you down during the season. Your planting and harvest windows are short. For genuine Case IH parts and service, schedule an off season uptime inspection at Titan Machinery today. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH dealer.
Welcome back here to the Northern Ag Expo in Fargo. And one of the big hot topics has been markets. And joining us right now, market expert uh, Chad Hart with Iowa State University. And let's talk about soybeans. It's all about trade and a deal with China. But even if we were to get a deal, have we missed our opportunity for marketing beans to China? My fear is that we have. Because when you're looking at China, the idea is typically now is when we're shipping it to China. And then it tends to die off as we move into the springtime. Even if we strike a deal today, it would take two to three months for us to open up that trade flow again. And so we've probably missed it for this year. And a lot of beans went into storage, which is unusual. Guys are hoping to get, you know, an improvement in basis and in price. What do you see? What are you telling them to do for marketing? Well, when we're looking up here, especially in the Great Plains, we have seen basis improvement. And so it does make sense to grab a little bit of that while you can. You're a little bit better than average. As I'm looking at sort of the central and eastern Corn Belt, we haven't seen the basis improvement yet. The problem is we may not there. And so that's what a lot of people are doing is they're basically going, okay, I'm going to try to hold on to these beans as long as I can to hopefully see not only some basis improvement, but hopefully some futures movement as well to try to capture it. But it's a really wild card here when we're looking at not a lot of people throughout the world are used to storing beans longer term. Absolutely. What about the corn market? Exports have been very good, but ethanol margins, 10-year um, lows because of what's been going on with crude oil. So talk about what that means for the market. Well, that's the deal. We are starting to see the ethanol grind, if you will, slow down. We've seen a few plants shudder, and that's going to erode down that domestic demand that we need so desperately right now. As you mentioned, exports are on a really good clip right now, but that's even starting to slow down a bit. And so right now... Corn demand has been strong, but it's strong but slowly eroding, and that could be a problem as we look into this spring. Some great advice. Thanks for joining us. Chad Hart with Iowa State University here at the Northern Ag Expo. USDA issued the final harvest progress report for the year, and it looks like some of the crop may not be harvested until winter or even spring. U.S. corn harvest is at 94 percent, which leaves 6 percent of the crop yet to be combined. However, in our region, South Dakota farmers still have 10 percent of their corn to harvest, and North Dakota farmers have 20 percent of the crop yet in the field. And U.S. farmers also have 6 percent of the beans yet to harvest, and that's also the case in North Dakota. However, the rest of the region is nearly done. And here's John with our AgriWeather Outlook. Weather portion of Ag Week now. You know, the snows keep coming through the middle of the country and they keep missing most of the northern plains. The current wind going east rather quickly, but it will leave behind some snow on the ground because of the cold temperature pattern. It is kind of interesting how this week and really for the last many weeks, the pattern precipitation wise has been resembling an El Nino type pattern with the storm track kind of coming through the midsection of the country. What's not El Nino like are these cold temperatures. As we go through the week ahead, uh, it looks relatively quiet. Although I do expect another rain snow system to be conjured up in the Ohio River Valley that will likely again quickly move up through the northeast. And by the end of the week, it looks like another substantial California rain, one early in the week and another one later in the week. But those cold temperatures here in the north, they're just not going away. The two double barrel branches of the jet stream both allowing cold weather to seep in to the northern plains and the eastern U.S. The really frigid weather is staying up north, but this cold supply will keep the Dakotas for the most part below freezing during this week, and I don't really see that changing very much through at least the mid part of December. So this sort of begs the question, what happened to El Nino? Well, it's actually ongoing. The warm waters increasing above average water temperatures are there off the coast of Central and South America. Sea surface temperatures continue to get warmer and warmer. So what that means is eventually we'll start getting random and then increasing areas of thunderstorms in this part of the eastern tropical Pacific, which normally doesn't get a lot of stormy weather. It's typically dry. The thunderstorms will affect the jet stream by translating energy northward. So by the time we get into mid and late winter, it is quite possible possible that the more classic, milder El Nino type pattern will show up. Dig, lay, and bury drain tile all in one pass with the Crary Tile Pro Plow. The Crary Tile Pro Plow lays tile up to 7 feet deep with boot sizes of 4 to 12 inches. Advantages of installing drain tile to your field provides increased overall yield, improved soil moisture levels, and controls soil erosion. It pays to tile with a Crary Tile Pro. To locate a dealer near you, 
visit www.prairietilepro.com. With the all-new GreenFit system from Rycard, Plug and Play is finally a reality when using John Deere AutoTrack guidance with existing new products like the Challenger 1000 Series or all-new C-Series Road Gators from Butler Machinery. GreenFit is an authorized navigation interface that utilizes the existing John Deere AutoTrack guidance system to steer most Challenger tractors and sprayers. GreenFit eliminates the worry of learning and converting to a new steering system when buying an industry-leading Challenger from Butler Machinery. Learn more about GreenFit at butlermachinery.com. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley source for Batco. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley Batco dealer. Stephas. We have representatives everywhere. Through North Dakota, South Dakota, Iowa, and Minnesota, we can find a buyer for what you were selling. We know how to market your farmland or equipment. Give us a call. We'll sit down and tell you all about the Stephas way. Welcome back. One of the seminars at the Northern Ag Expo looked at how wheat is working back into the rotation with the current price environment and what its future might be in the region and the world. Jonathan Knudsen talked to industry experts and has more. Michelle, wheat is on the rebound. North Dakota planted acres rose 20% in 2018 and could rise again next year, in part because of concerns about soybeans. Here's how a veteran commodity group leader views the outlook. There are people talking about another increase in acres, and I think we have to remember that we saw a 20% increase in wheat acres here in North Dakota this last year. Um, another major increase might be a, a, a difficult thing, but we'll see how the econo economics and, and the other features, uh, the feel-good part of it, works out for us this year. Farmer and North Dakota FSA director Brad Thickison's two sons, who once saw little future in wheat, now have renewed interest in the crop. Spreading out the workload is a big thing and the other thing I mentioned earlier is that the soil health is coming into a big play and when producers get an opportunity to uh, sell this wheat maybe in advance and actually pencil in a profit with good conditions and it takes a little bit of management with wheat but it's definitely coming back. It's a long way until planning so it's too early to be certain but for now there's definitely more interest in wheat. Michelle? Thanks Jonathan. Farmers, agronomists, and seed companies here at the Expo were talking about what the acreage mix may look like for 2019, and that is while some of the farmers are still trying to harvest the 2018 crop. There's quite a bit of crop out there, quite a bit of corn in, in certain areas. There's still some soybeans out there, and we're uh, you know certainly concerned for all those farmers who have crop out in the field. The ones that are left out there, obviously, we're running into wet beans and uh, tough combining situations, so it's a lot of them that are still there we won't be able to take the latest harvest that we've ever had. This is my 43rd crop. This beats our record by a month later than normal. And of course, with the crop still in the field, that will impact what farmers plant next season in addition to the current commodity prices. A lot of the soybean acres um, yields were not what were expected. And so the acre shift will probably go down based on, on a tougher yield uh, environment as well as the the price pressure on that where exactly those acres are going to go is still a little bit up in the air what i'm hearing is in sales wise is they're kind of adding a little more corn if not keeping things pretty pretty much the same as what they've been doing in the previous years guys are talking a little bit more wheat in certain areas definitely going to be moving into more corn because the bean market looks very bleak moving forward Still ahead on Ag Week TV, we'll hear from an innovative farmer on the value of failing.
Stein Seed Company is home to one of the most prolific, highest yielding corn and soybean breeding programs in the world. When it comes to research, yield is what matters most. With the largest private soybean breeding program in the U.S. and the industry's most aggressive corn research, Stein is in a class of its own when it comes to developing new, higher-performing seed. Choose genetics. Choose results. Give Shane Kylo a call at 701-866-9864 to learn what Stein Seed can do for your operation. This is Dennis Beliski. If you're trying to save a little money this fall but still need to make a major purchase before year-end, check out resourceauction.com. Our December 3rd auction is chock full of good units that will sell to the highest bidder. Our suppliers have made the decision to liquidate equipment, and this is without a doubt the region's premier year-end consignment event. Hundreds of units up for sale with many tractors, trucks, and combines. Check it out at resourceauction.com, and we'll see you on December 3rd. DTE is your headquarters for flatbeds and service bodies for your truck. Whether you need to haul bales, heavy commercial equipment, or take every tool with you, DTE has the truck equipment you need. We have over 200 units on hand or will custom build a flatbed or service body on your truck. Like this Dewey's bale bed with dual lift cylinder arms. Lift, load, and handle your bales with ease. When you need help at the farm, your business, or in the oil patch, count on DTE. DTE, let us build a truck for you. Ag Week is excited to bring you the Ag Week app with useful features and the latest news and information right at your fingertips. Get your Ag Week news, weather, and the latest episodes of Ag Week TV. Plus, see real time information on the futures market and view local cash bids for your crops. Stay updated and take Ag Week with you wherever you are. Download the Ag Week app today. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? Ag Week Magazine. Reaching over 70,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. Ag Week provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. Ag Week. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. Welcome back. Jill Salatin is a Virginia farmer who speaks and writes on soil conservation and holistic management. He disparages veganism and Monsanto. He's a proponent of running livestock on perennials rather than raising annuals like corn or soybeans. He criticizes big animal agriculture companies for their environmental practices and for operating a high cost of entry for new farmers. And he says it's okay to fail that's what leads to innovation. That grandma was wrong when she said if it's worth doing it's worth doing right. Actually she's wrong if it's worth doing it's worth doing poorly first because we don't do it right the first way and all of us need room to be able to uh, to, to make those changes and innovate in a safe zone of, of failure. Employees and farmers from the state's 54 soil conservation districts attended the convention in November. It also featured workshops, meetings and a recognition banquet. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV here from the Northern Ag Expo. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or download the Ag Week app. And be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. We'll see you next week.